farming is an agricultural practice that is mainly for long-term production of milk, which is processed either on the farm or at a dairy plant for eventual sale of dairy products. Most dairy farms typically consist of high-producing dairy cows such as Ashers, Gansies, Jerseys, and Freshans. However, as the demand for milk products keep increasing by the day, many farmers are embracing new improved cow breeds that produce high milk yields than the most known dairy breeds. In today's Dairy Farming Show, we visit the dairy farm of a member of parliament for Bomachoge Chache constituency, Alpha Miruka. Alpha rears white freshians, which he says produce high milk yields. Join us as you explore his farm. I'm a small scale farmer, venturing mostly in dairy farming. I'm also a businessman, mostly in construction industry. But currently, I'm a member of parliament for Bomachoge Chache constituency. I started from Morocco breed, later I improved. Now currently, I have only B degrees, freshians. But I have two types of freshians. I have a white, I have a white freshian and a black freshian. But most farmers, they prefer black freshians. But me, I prefer the white freshians because white freshians, as far as they are within the zero grazing unit, they produce more milk. Freshian breeds are arguably the most desired dairy breeds in Kenya and other parts of the world. They can be one of two coat color types, white with black patches, which is the most known common color, or white with red patches. The two breeds are very similar in size, weighing between 500 to 600 kilograms. Some outstanding characteristics of the breed include the animals being able to lactate between 12 to 15 times in their entire lifespan. The breed is generally found in the Netherlands, USA and the United Kingdom, although semen exports are on the increase to grass-based systems of milk production. Now I have a friend eh, who usually supplies me with the, with the type of this specific USA-based semen type. He's called uh, Bruce. Bruce is a British man who has a farm in Nakuru, a farm called Kenani Farm. He's the one who introduced me to this white and black freshians. That was 20207 I had one cow. But that time I have not migrated. This I've, I've stayed in this compound for around eight years now. Once I was here I had three cows. I had three cows which are pure freshians. Now what motivated me to keep on adding this is the way they produce. It is only after improving his breeds that he was able to meet the growing demand for milk in his neighborhood. Daily farming is the only business that uh, have a ready market. As we know our Kenyan uh, environment, nobody wants to take the black coffee all the time. People love milk. Now it's a commodity that's ready market. People queue that they need that milk. As far as your milk is pure, has no contamination, you are sure, then people like that milk. Now in that sense, most people don't venture in uh, dairy farming. Due to that, they have the local breeds. The local breeds, they are uh, somehow meaty, eh? they are muscular, they don't produce milk. Now for freshians and ashes, they produce more milk. That means you can serve more people in terms of supply. Alpha started his dairy farming venture back in 2007 with one local breed, which he later on improved by artificial insemination, and that is how he got the black and white freshians. That one cow, I served it twice with a sexy semen which later gave me a very young energetic calf, which after two years, it, I had now two calves. But after some time, after I improved my business, I went and he purchased two, three more freshians from the Kenani farm. For example, recently, I had one. There is, I used to have a very high, high healing cow. In fact, it used to produce 40 liters a day. But now, because of political reasons, I was, I was very busy, I was not close to my farm. The, the workers underfed in terms of minerals. Now, while he was giving the second lactation, it just, once it's down, after being bad, it never, it never stood. And once the, a day, uh, a fresh and stays in two, in two days without standing, then you let it off. Alpha's farm now boasts of 12 pure Frasian cows and 8 cows. Out of the total number of cattle he has, he only milks around 7 cows of them. There is no single day you will milk all cows at the same time. You must 
have an interval. If you have 10, you have to milk around 6 to 7 because of the lactation periods. Eh? You may find one is going to give birth 2 to 3 months at the interval of 2 to 3 months. Alpha insists that a farmer needs to be feeding his animals with the correct food proportions as well as provide them with enough supplements. Frisians are preeminently a grazing animal. This in turn makes them able to sustain themselves over many lactations on both low-lying and upland grasslands. Alpha mainly feeds his cattle on napier grass, hay and salt supplements. He says he normally feeds his animal twice in a day, mostly when milking is being done. Our match green we feed cows is napier grass. Napier grass now to Nachangkanya, we purchase hay, which is a dry matter. We we bring it from Rififari, a place called Mulot. In fact, 30 kilometers from Mulot Center. There is a farm there whereby we purchase one, one pail at around 250 shillings. Then now, if you mix that nepe grass, which is the green content, with the dry mud, then you are comfortable of that feeding. Those are the two main components of meal that I'm giving this dairy cow. Parts of the dry components Alpha adds to supplement his dairy feeds include dairy meal, maize jam, cotton seed, sweet cake, and dairy cubes. They are there to stimulate the milk production. Number one is the dairy meal. Dairy meal I usually give them while they are milking. Now while feeding, I usually mix a part of the dairy meal. Though Freshans produce jam, a lot of milk, but I increase the protein content. Either I use the, uh, the cotton sweet cake or the dairy cubes. Now, if I mix them in a proportion that I, I give them gradually, now you find the milk production that day, it must go up. Water is another important component to dairy cattle. According to Alpha, if a cow is not given adequate water, it can get stomach bloating, which can cause death. If there's not enough water and green content, if the cow takes more dry matter, it may affect his digestion. Now, the one I'm, I have white fresh and here you have seen, now, I'm sure the worker did a mistake. He fed them wine, the dry mother without enough water. Now, in the room, man, there was no digestion. You just woke up in the morning, the cow used to seem very happy. It's not chewing cud, it's not feeding, it's just there the whole day. Now, the second day, I called my doctor, I have a very good doctor who came and told me there must be problem in intestinal alignment. Then he came and did slight of surgery. We aligned, and after two, three days, the cow gained gradually because of cooler. Now it's one month old, as you have seen it, and it's now picking the milk. Now it used to be the highest producing cow, but now it's average. It's now in ascending graph. Mastitis and East Coast fever are some of the major diseases that affect dairy cattle. Once there is mastitis, if you cannot react very fast, you can lose that cow. Those are the two challenges we have mastitis and the lack of minerals. Eh? If you cannot feed this muscle iron, you cannot feed them, they lose the muscle, the bone muscle to sustain themselves. The more the cow gives you milk, the more it loses minerals. Now you must feed, the minerals must be in a slight portion for the cow to sustain every now and again to give you milk with quality. Now the advantage of cereal grazing like this, you minimize diseases. Another challenge that Alpha explained he gets on his farm is that of rats, which he says bring ticks and fleas into his shade. But now, for rats, to me, I use a very simple method to chase them away. Number one, we, we must have um, a pakisi to napenda kufuka paka. Paka na panya, as fanya in, as the one. But when you, your mode of storage of hay, they like that place. It's becoming a bleeding area for rats. Now, if you don't, don't store a lot of hay, the more you stay hay for a lot of time, the more you breed a lot of rats. And the more they come, they feed with the animals. You have to reduce that. Challenge number two is the climatic change of Kisi. Kisi, because there is no land, napier grass becomes a challenge. When there is a dry season, for example, three to one month, napier grass in Akosa Kabisa, now it will force you to reduce 
your ratios of feeding. But otherwise, in dairy farming, I can tell them that if you are sharp and uh, focused, you reduce the disadvantages more than advantages are more than disadvantages. The benefits are more. By the way, the rate of return in milk is more than. And okay, let me give you an example. Somebody has a car, has a a matri operating from Kisi categories. You cannot compare with somebody who is having dairy farming. Because in six months you can you can you can run a cow giving you milk a constant with a constant pro producing in terms of liters, having the same same market value. But for somebody who is having a car assumed with a matri, everyday maintenance cost, the risk in transport system is higher than dairy farming. To me I prefer this and I encourage farmers to find in dairy farming. Stay with KTN Farmers TV for more on dairy farms still to come. Thank you.